Last year, I found this compact laptop at a car boot sale. It was looking very sad, it was filthy, it was getting rained on, and I sort of felt sorry for it. So I offered the bloke five quid, and he practically bit my arm off. Bit of a red flag. I got the laptop home, opened her up, and she was in a sorry state. The laptop was obviously well used. It was it was dirty, it was dusty, it was it was grimy. The CMOS battery was completely dead, and the mains battery was was long dead too, and was leaking battery acid everywhere. So there was no way for me to power it on to see if it even worked. Luckily enough, I went onto eBay and I managed to pick up an original power cable for about eight quid. The stars aligned because it actually booted up, which was a real relief. The hard drive made an awful racket, it was clicking a lot, and for, you know, some 25-year-old spinning disc, I thought, well, you know what, it's only a matter of time, really, before that goes permanently, so I needed to sort that as soon as possible. The previous owner had installed Windows 95 on it, which makes no sense to me. I can't think of any real reason why you'd need to run Windows 95 on a 75 megahertz Pentium processor. But the good news is, of course, I haven't had my leg pulled. The thing actually works. Now she's a bit of an old banger, but you know, she's got it where it counts, kid. And everything else, I can probably fix myself. So after I'd finished giving her a good clean up, the first thing I decided to do was to go and buy a new CMOS battery. Now usually, this is a very simple case of just buying one of those CR2032 button cells. But no, not this compact laptop. It took me ages to track one of these down because it's this weird like 4.8 volt, almost AAA thing with a cable and a proprietary connector on the end. It's a nice Nightmare. But I finally, I managed to track one down on a French PC parts website, and 28 euros later, I had one sent to me. Bit of a sting, that one. Now, when it came to the mains battery, that's a completely different story. So far to date, I think I've bought five mains batteries for this laptop, all from different sites, from different parts of Europe, and even internationally. And to date, not one has turned up. The takeaway from this, I think, would be do not trust websites that say they've got stock of a 25-year-old battery that probably no one's asking for. My advice is just do not bother trying to replace the battery. The power cable works fine, so the machine works. So we've got it running and we've got it booting consistently, so the next thing would be to fix that one gigabyte hard drive. Like I said, it was a ticking time bomb, quite literally a ticking time bomb, and I wanted to get a bit of longevity out of this machine. And I noticed that it's fairly fashionable these days to run a compact flash card in lieu of a hard disk drive in old computers. A compact flash card functions essentially the same way as an SSD, in fact. You know, there's no spinning disk, there's no mechanical parts, it's got faster read and write speeds, and it has a much higher capacity. A cool fact about compact flash cards is the pinout on a compact flash is exactly the same as the IDE standard, meaning that you don't actually need to convert it in any way. Each pin goes to the exact same pin on IDE, which is actually great because you can just buy these really cheap Chinese CF to IDE adapters on eBay and Bob's your uncle, it works natively in any machine. In fact, this will even work on your Amigas and on your Atari STs, so it's a really cool thing to think about if you want some bigger or more reliable capacity in your old computers. Now, DOS will only recognize the first two gigabytes of any volume. I don't think they really ever expected hard drives to get this big. You'll have to use FDisk to partition it if you want to use the full capacity. Quick point I do want to make is I struggled for ages to get this SanDisk card working. I tried using disk overlays, I went through the BIOS, I tried different formatting programs, I tried everything and in the end I just gave up. I just bought another one. I just bought this cheap four quid no brand compact flash card and it worked immediately. So your mileage will vary and I don't really have much advice to give because the usual advice is go for a brand. In my instance going for a brand didn't work. I grabbed the floppy disk images of DOS 4 from Phil, whacked them onto some floppies and away we went. It installed perfectly. Now at this point I now have practically my ultimate early 90s DOS machine. It, it runs everything I could throw at it. It runs Doom like a fucking champion, and so I'm absolutely sorted. And just because I could, I also installed Windows 3.1. I don't think I'm really ever gonna need it, but now I have a retro PC that runs every operating system from DOS all the way up to Windows ME, and for some reason that just makes me feel really good. God, I need to have a word with myself. One of the cool things about these compact LTE laptops is they've got these hot swappable drives, but alas, I just cannot find the CD-ROM drive. I've got external parallel CD-ROM drives, which work absolutely fine. You can get the drivers, but 
you know, it just would have been nice to have that level of completion. Much like finding that replacement battery, you know, these things are all well over 20 years old now, and most people probably took this stuff down the tip when they didn't want it anymore. Considering there's no real, like, collector value to it, it's like finding hen's teeth. It's a shame, but there we are, that's the situation. I'm not too cut up about not having the CD-ROM drive, though, because the big advantage of the compact flash card is that I can just use one of these cheap, like, Poundland CF adapters, and I can just drag and drop hundreds of games onto the card, and I don't even have to really bother about running the CD-ROM drive or, or running install programs. The important thing, of course, to remember is that I have this sick Pentium 1 laptop and with a total spend of about, what, 40 odd quid? This is going to give me all of the DOS gaming that I could want for years to come. That's just fantastic. With a few quid, a bit of patience, and with the help of people smarter than you, you could also put together a DOS machine of equal or better value than this. If you like old computers and old DOS gaming, please subscribe to The Game Show and check back soon. Thanks very much. Ta-da.